Hey guys, Dizzy PW here with MMO Huts. We're doing a long overdue look at King of the Kill, formerly known as H1Z1, still kind of known as H1Z1, but now it's a lot more about killing other players like you always wanted to do. So, you are a very familiar face with us, but for those that are new to the channel, can you introduce yourself and what you do with the company? Absolutely. My name is Jens Anderson. I'm the Executive Creative Director at Daybreak Games, and I'm working on H1Z1 King of the Kill. And tell us, what is King of the Kill? King of the Kill is a survival arena shooter. Um, it is a new and emerging genre that we think. We think it's a brand new genre that we're kind of pioneering here. And it t for us, as uh, Daybreak, we specialize in massively multiplayer, right? So we're taking this to another level by having 150 players in each of these matches drop into this match with nothing, no equipment, no guns, no anything, and they have to loot everything they can find to gear up, arm themselves, and take out other players. It's a single elimination experience, so once you get killed, you're out, you gotta queue up again, the match continues until there's only one player left. There's a 100 square kilometer arena that you actually play on in this, in this match with loot and points of interest all over the place. As the match progresses, toxic gas is released from the edges and safe zones are marked on the map where players have to move to so they don't get killed by the toxic gas and, and poisoned in there. As the match goes on, that ring, that safe zone gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, forcing the remaining players into contact with each other until there's only one king of the kill left. So when we touched on the game previously, there was two main issues we had with it. One was the physics were a little bit wonky. The other was the crafting system seemed a bit tacked on. Yeah. Have you guys done anything to address this recently? Absolutely. Actually, um, we've just done a huge update that had great combat changes, some changes to the balance and progression and pace of the VR matches, and also to vehicles. Vehicles got a big improvement recently. The physics all got tuned and tweaked, so it's a lot more fun to drive the cars. Along with the redesign of all the terrain on the map, um, it's a really nice feeling now. We've got tire screeching as you're taking that tight turn around the corner, tire tracks being left and dust kicked up all over the place. Um, so that's a lot of fun. If you do roll your car and get into a terrible accident, you can actually flip your car back over after it's taken some damage to just keep on rolling. Um, we have a new feature in there too. Before, people were actually just yanking out spark plugs and batteries really quickly and disabling all the cars on the map. Um, so what we did was we actually made it a lot harder to take spark plugs and batteries out. It takes time, like it normally would in a car, right? So you're really at risk if you're sitting there trying to do that, you know, and your head's just sit, sitting up there ready to get popped by another player. So instead we put keys in. You can take the key out and with you and then nobody can actually start the car right away, <laughs> but they can hotwire it. And that makes the sound, nice. alerts you that somebody's trying to hotwire your car outside. You can rush back out to protect it. Um, so a lot of strategy and tactics and things like that with the vehicles now. Um, the vehicles actually have different uses and functions. The cruisers are the fastest vehicle. The off-roaders are actually the uh, best handlers and, and, and terrain. And the trucks, they're beaters, man. They're the most durable. And they have a unique function in team play. If you're playing in a five-man uh, uh, match, those uh, seats in the bed, you can actually shoot backwards or stand up and shoot over the cab as well, lay down fire 360. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you mentioned crafting. We just added a whole pass of crafting into King of the Kill. Um, we added duct tape to the loop on the map because, you know, you can make anything with duct tape, right? Um, <laughs> so in the mid game, you didn't really care about helmets and, you know, military backpacks. You had your backpack already, but now you do. You pick up those extra helmets that you see, shred them, dismantle them into armor scraps. Pick up those extra tan military backpacks, turn those into um, uh, composite fiber. And then you can combine those things with duct tape and you're actually making some makeshift armor for yourself to protect yourself, make yourself more powerful. So with the transition to this new game style, have you done anything to tweak the user interface to more match the new style of play? That's a great question. We have an entirely new user interface launching on September 20th with the game. Um, it is completely redone from the HUD all the way to the front end experience. It adds great new features to the game as well. Uh, customization up front, so before you even go into the match, you can determine what your character will look like as they pick up loot, and loot things will auto skin it. You can store those as pre-loadouts. So one day you want to be a paramilitary guy, that's really cool. Another day you want to be wearing like a cop outfit because you're pretending you're like a cop, you know, in this post-apocalyptic world. You can do that too, preset it, just select your loadout and stuff auto skins as you pick it up. It's a really cool feature. Um, we have Twitch integration going into the game. There's a whole new screen 
that is dedicated to Twitch broadcasters and uh, their viewers and our Twitch community. You can see who's on air broadcasting the game right now. Um, you can see leaderboards for our streamers and actually say, hey, you know, I, this guy has a lot of viewers, but I really want to see, like, you know, somebody that's maybe not as popular as a streamer, but really good at the game. Maybe I'll learn something. You kind of can filter the list to wins and kills versus views and uh, followers and things like that. Maybe you'll discover a new streamer that you really like. And then, of course, streamers are able to actually invite people directly from their chat in Twitch to play the game with them, assuming that those people have the game. So it's really easy for the streamers to actually group with their community and celebrate play King of the Kill. I really love that feature. It's I hope that feature. becomes standard in, across the industry, really. Uh, we've actually uh, patented it, I believe, and copyrighted it. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's all ours. Hardcore. Yeah, no, that's no, hardcore. No, smart. Really. That's a smart move. No, yeah. no. <laughs> I uh, wish. <laughs> I was gonna say that's impressive. Yeah. That's that's thinking ahead. Ah, <laughs> uh, so say people want to check this out. Is there any big esports tournaments coming up where they could see some real legit players jump in and just manhandle each other? Absolutely. You know, we're all about organized play, and we want that to be a very uh, accessible experience for the new user and the veterans. Um, we're going to be giving a score to people in the game now when they're done with matches so they can see and compare themselves to other players on the leaderboard. So that's just sort of the beginnings of the in-game experience that we're moving toward with competitive play. But we have our invitational coming up. Last year we went to TwitchCon, we had our first invitational. Um, it was a huge success, one of the most watched events at TwitchCon. So definitely check it out this year. You can go see details at h1z1.com slash invitational. See who's participating. We have our returning champions coming back. And of course, the prize pool last year, $175,000 generated by our players who bought this particular invitational crate, which had all these wearables that celebrated our streamers. We're doing that again. 25% of those proceeds go to the, uh, the prize pool. And it's already, after it's only been out like two weeks or something like that, at $130,000. So we know it's going to just get up there and even make last year's uh, prize pool look small. So we're looking forward to that. Best of luck with the tournament. Thanks Thank so you. much for giving us an update on King of the Kill. Absolutely. Thank you for uh, checking out the game. It's launching September 20th, 2016. Awesome.